Hello and welcome to Between the Pillars. Today and in the following couple of videos, I will talk about Hod, the eighth sphere on the tree of life. Hod is the sphere of the human intellect. Hod connects to the right side of the brain, the cognitive hemisphere, through the 31st path, the perpetual intelligence, illustrated by Tarot card 20, Judgment. Intelligence exists independently of the brain and the mind. Together with uh, Netzach, Hod forms the higher mind. After our body dies, our soul will withdraw from the physical body and ascend to Yesod. Yesod uploads our life memories from our etheric body and our physical body and etheric body disintegrate. After that, we enter the psychoanalytical afterlife session, during which we review our life experiences and judge what we did well and not so well. Then, when we are done with that, Isut, the lower astral body dissolves too, and we carry on with the higher mind, or higher astral body, made of Hod and Netzach. With them, we move up the tree of life to recharge the batteries of our higher bodies and prepare for the next incarnation. Hod is the sphere of intelligence in human personality. We use our intelligence all day long to solve problems and get what we want. But what is intelligence really? According to ageless wisdom, intelligence isn't limited to Hod. The 10 Sephiroth and the 22 paths of the Tree of Life are all intelligences. Kether is the wonderful intelligence, Hokma is the illuminating intelligence, Bina is the sanctifying intelligence, and so on. The notion that intelligence is not limited to the intellectual fac faculty of human personality made it already into common sense. People consider that there is something like an emotional intelligence, for example. Also psychology embraces the idea that there are multiple intelligences. The psychologist Howard Gardner described nine types of intelligences logical, mathematical, linguistic, intrapersonal, musical, bodily, kinesthetic, and naturalistic. The first three belong to Hod. Howard arrived only at nine intelligences because psychology limits itself to the personality section on the tree of life, made of Netza, Hod, Yesod, Markuth, and the path connecting them. Netzach is the hidden intelligence, Hod is the perfect intelligence, Yesod the pure intelligence, and Malkuth the resplendent intelligence. These names indicate the deeper hidden faculties of those Sephiroth. We unlock those when we perform enlightenment. When we perform enlightenment, we can also discover and unlock the higher intelligence on the tree of life, those of Tifereth and Ab. Simplified, consciousness evolves in three steps. Consciousness begins as awareness. Awareness is dreamlike, subjective and unfocused. It is also ignorant and does not understand what it is aware of. We, souls, began with awareness. Incarnation evolves awareness to consciousness. Subject to the pressure of incarnation, we learn to understand the things we are aware of. Thereby, we transform awareness into consciousness. Consciousness introduces a new factor, objectivity. Understanding requires objectivity, seeing things as they really are and not the way we want them to be. Awareness is subjective, consciousness is objective. On a side note, mystical visions are subjective. As beautiful and ecstatic mystical visions are, we don't understand them and can't make use of them. That's why modern enlightenment doesn't encourage mysticism. Mysticism is the old way. The new way is to arrive at spiritual visions. Spiritual visions are objective and we can make use of them. The next evolutionary step of consciousness is the evolution from consciousness to intelligence. For that, we need self-consciousness. 
when we incarnate, we get an avatar, the body-mind spacesuit. That avatar comes with self-consciousness. Self-consciousness serves as a reference point within the soul's consciousness. Once the soul has a point of reference, it can judge what it is conscious of. It can judge if experiences are good or bad for the soul. And this defines intelligence, the ability to judge and make use of what we are conscious of. The Hebrew term for intelligence indicates this threefold evolution. The Hebrew term for intelligence is cycle. The root word of cycle means to look at. This indicates awareness, the simple act of witnessing something. Another meaning of cycle is insight, which indicates consciousness, the ability to understand the nature of the things we become aware of. Sekel has the value 350. This is also the value of SPYR, which means sapphire, and is a possible root for the word sapphira. Other words of this value are naked, which indicates truth, to shine, refers to consciousness, and atonements, the ability to atone to higher intelligences. On a side note, in the Old Testament, consciousness is allegorized by the ability to name things. Remember who had that ability? It was Adam. Adam, which means literally human, not man, stands for human consciousness. We can observe the evolution of consciousness also in the so-called kingdoms of nature. Nobody has put this as beautiful as even Arabi. God sleeps in the rock, dreams in the plant, stirs in the animal and awakens in humanity. Plants are aware, animals are conscious and humans are intelligent. Of course, the borders are not clear cut. Plants can be conscious of other plants, proven by the fact that they can establish chemical communication channels. And animals possess rudimentary intelligence. What about the sleep of the rocks? That refers to the enlightenment truth that everything has consciousness, even seemingly inanimate matter. Sounds far-fetched? Don't think rock. Think of the energy and vibe rocks are made of. The physical appearance of rocks is an illusion. Rocks are vibes as everything else. Inanimate matter is made of consciousness, but it is subconscious. The main function of subconsciousness is memory, the high priestess. Memory is everywhere. Make a dent in a rock and the dent will remain. That's a form of memory. Tarot card 18, the moon, shows the evolution of consciousness in more detail. The pool in front of the picture stands for the substance of awareness, the first matter. The first matter is virgin or inactive awareness. It is represented by the high priestess. When this substance stirs, it becomes awareness. The pool is surrounded by rocks, the subconscious awareness of inanimate matter. Then come the plants and then the dog and the wolf, animals. Where's the human? The human is asleep. With Homo sapiens, awareness reached the evolutionary stage of intelligence. But this is not the final stage. Enlightenment evolves intelligence into superconsciousness. What is superconsciousness? It is not fundamentally different from intelligence. Superconsciousness means that we unlock the higher intelligence of intelligences of the tree of life and enjoy their particular powers. Now that we have a better understanding of intelligence, we can have a closer look at Hod. In order to differentiate Hod from the other intelligence, I will call Hod the intellectual sphere, which puts an emphasis on the thinking processes that take place in Hod. Hod means splendor. Why splendor? When I first heard this, I struggled with this name. What has thinking to do with splendor? What does splendor even mean? Thinking rests on the ability to differentiate. If we can't tell things apart, we can't think about them. Differentiation is the root of thinking. The ability to differentiate does not come from Hod. It comes from Bina. Bina is the Sephiroth on top of the pillar of severity, Hod is on bottom of that pillar. Bina is responsible for creation, Hod is responsible for 
incarnation. Thinking evolves our ability to differentiate. Being able to distinguish just black and white means low intelligence. Being able to distinguish a hundred gray shades means high intelligence. And how do we experience the distinction of a hundred gray shades? As splendor. Undifferentiated perception is dull. Differentiated perception is splendor. If we practice differentiation through thinking, we evolve our consciousness. That's one reason why the Rosicrucian grade of Hort is called practicus, which means practitioner. We need to practice perceiving gray shades in all aspects of life, in particular religious, philosophical and moral gray shades. Science progresses with differentiation too. Rutherford's nuclear model of atoms differentiated just between the nucleus and electrons. Subsequent models distinguish subnuclear particles and the string theory distinguishes what subnuclear particles are made of. Also enlightenment proceeds with differentiation. The distinction of different realities for one and the distinction of all the layers of ourself, such as the rudimentary ego, the astrological ego, the soul, the lower mind, the higher mind, the higher self, etc. The Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus summarizes the basic secrets of enlightenment. It puts differentiation high up on the agenda. So shall separate the earth from the fire, the subtle from the groves, suavely and with great ingenuity. Out of the ability to differentiate arise the two basic intellectual capacities. A. The recognition of patterns and B. The ability to draw logical conclusions. Many IQ tests test these two capabilities. They display a series of images and task us to recognize the pattern first and then conclude the correct continuation of the pattern. IQ tests also test verbal comprehension. Mind that Hoth and Netzach link through the exciting intelligence associated with the Hebrew letter P. As a noun, P means the mouth as an organ of speech. Hoth also produces the three-dimensional illusion of space-time. Intelligence can turn information into knowledge. Information is neutral. Information is just data and facts. Like the fact that the sky looks blue. Hold interprets facts by relating them to context. That's understanding. Knowledge is useful information. This mirrors the evolution of awareness. Awareness provides information. Consciousness understands information and turns it into knowledge. Intelligence makes use of knowledge. Since knowledge is contextual, it's always relative relative to its context. One and the same fact can mean different things in different contexts. The fact that we are alive becomes different knowledge in the context of bi biology and enlightenment. In the context of biology, we are organisms. In the context of enlightenment, we are immortal souls who take an organism as avatar to have planetary experiences. Context limits knowledge and knowledge limits possibilities. If we don't know that we are immortal souls, we can't make use of this knowledge. Neither can we make use of the soul's powers. Enlightenment differentiates two types of knowledge, common knowledge and wisdom. We derive common knowledge from thinking about experiences, for example, scientific knowledge and street wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge of the principle or laws that constitute a context, for example, the laws of physics. On the tree of life, the sphere of wisdom is Chokma, the second sphere. We can't acquire wisdom through experiences, only through initiation. We know from experience that things we throw into the air will drop back onto the ground. But Newton arrived at the law of gravitation through initiation. True, Newton racked his brain to 
tarot card for the emperor and hold the thinking, but that only prepared the mind for initiation. Tarot card five, the Hierophant. All scientific discoveries are initiations, initiations into the invisible laws working behind the appearances of planetary experiences. Enlightenment works through initiations too. Age's wisdom comprises the principles or laws of creation and evolution. Hence, Age's wisdom is the umbrella context and involves all our con other contexts, including physics. Thank you for watching this episode of Between the Pillars. The next video will cover the differences between ideas and thoughts and how to make practical use of that. Please help spreading the light with a like and a share. And don't forget to subscribe. Love and light.